Good morning. And if we ignore the weather forecast for the beginning of the, month, the next week, all I can say is it's a bright, beautiful spring morning this morning. We too welcome those who are listening to the service on any form of multimedia. We hope you enjoy it um, and you hope, we hope that you feel part of our fellowship. Could any visitor please sign the visitor's book in the Lesser Sanctuary at the back of the church? And we invite you to come for tea, coffee and a chat at the end of the service. The intimations are shown on the intimation sheet, um, but I do have a couple of extras. Elders' communion duties for Easter Sunday are to be collected from the Lesser Sanctuary. Copies of Kirk Session Minutes for Elders not on email are also available in the Lesser Sanctuary. I've also been asked to read this notice on behalf of the Session Clerk. Netherley Parish Church Stated Annual Meeting 2018. Notice is hereby given that the 88th Stated Annual Meeting of the Congregation will be held in the Church today, Sunday 25th of March, at 12 noon. The agenda will include approval of the minutes of the meeting held on 26th of March 2017 to receive the trustees' annual report and accounts and to deal with any other competent business. By order of the trustees, John S. Montgomery, Session Clerk. We would encourage your attendance at this meeting. Copies of the 2017 report and accounts for everyone are available in the Lesser Sanctuary along with copies of the minutes of last year's stated annual meeting. Now, Barbara Cochrane would like to say something. Thank you. Good morning. Do you remember Vesta beef curries, syrup sandwiches, Spam, smash. If you do, we would like to know what your favourites were. On Sunday, the 22nd of April, Netherley Church celebrates its 90th anniversary, and we're going to have a lunch. And we've been racking our brains on what to do. So, what we're going to try and do is to look at favourite foods through the decades. And we're putting up some sheets on the boards at the back of the, church, or the large hall and we want you to put down what your favourite was up to the age of around about 10 and that should give us a good spread of the decades. We hope. <laughs> so what's your favourite now for the younger ones and what was your favourite um, then when you were young? And we'll do our best um, to try and replicate or put on some of these these favourites. Um, so get your, oh, we'll have the sheets up over the next few weeks, so get your uh, thinking caps on um, and put on what your favourites were and we'll, we'll put the lunch on. So that will be after the service on Sunday the 22nd of April. Thank you. The call to worship is Psalm 117. In praise of the Lord. Praise the Lord, all nations. Praise him, all peoples. His love for us is strong, and his faithfulness is eternal. Praise the Lord.
Then let us continue to sing on that note of Hosanna as we sing our first hymn, Hosanna, loud Hosanna, and the youngsters will come in with their palm branches as we sing. Let us pray together. A day of joy and celebration. A day to remember that you are the King, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords. A today to remember in this beginning of this springtime, this change of clock day, a, a change for us in so many different ways. May this be for us a change, Father, as we come to remember your wonderful Son, Jesus, how he entered Jerusalem all to the cries of celebration. Help us to welcome him afresh into our own lives, into our hearts, into our circumstances, everything that perhaps troubles us or concerns us or brings us joy. You bring life in all its fullness when you're in our midst. Then we pray that you will accept the praise and worship we bring and give us a real sense of expectation, we pray, as we look towards his coming kingdom. Father, gracious and loving God, like your people long ago, we do not always see clearly. Our faith is shallow and self-centered. We do not understand as we should. Our praise short-lived and superficial. But we ask in your mercy Take the faith we offer, weak though it may be, and deepen it through this day so that we may truly welcome Christ as our King and worship Him with joyful praises in every circumstance. Teach us through our reading and reflection on your word, through our hymns and prayers, through our meeting with one another and with you to understand more of what Palm Sunday means. Help us to picture Jesus riding into Jerusalem in triumph and yet humility. To a welcome, but also to be rejected. A crown, but also a cross. Father, may this day lead us to a deeper understanding of you and your kingdom. A greater awareness of your love. A clearer sense of your purpose. Yesterday, today, 
and tomorrow. Hear our prayer and speak to us now as we worship and even as we use the words that Jesus taught his disciples and us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen The scripture reading this morning is from the New Testament, from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Mark, chapter 11, verse 1. The triumphant entry (coughs) into Jerusalem. As they approached Jerusalem near the towns of Bethphage and Bethany, they came to the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a colt tied up that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if someone asks you why you're doing that, tell him that the master needs it and will send it back at once. So they went and found a colt out in the street tied to the door of a house. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders asked them, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered just as Jesus had told them, and the men let them go. They brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the animal, and Jesus got on. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches in the fields and spread them on the road. The people who were in front and those who followed behind began to shout, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the coming kingdom of King David our father. Praise God! Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple, and looked round at everything. But since it was already late in the day, he went out to Bethany with the twelve disciples. Amen, and praise be to God. You're at church. I can't be. Why? Because I'm king, that's why. A king? Hardly, you're our friend. You're joking, don't say I was only dreaming. You were only dreaming. Oi, I said don't say I was only dreaming. Oh, what a shame. It was a wonderful dream. I, yes I, was a great powerful king, dressed in fine clothes and wearing a crown. You? I had lots of servants I could boss around. I bet you enjoyed that. Servants who did my housework for me. Servants to fan me and keep me cool. Servant boys dropping grapes into my mouth. What a life. Dream on. I intend to. I had a Rolls Royce to go shopping in, a golden shopping trolley a bit like a chariot, and an adoring crowds waving and bowing to me. No waiting in queues for me, and I had millions of bananas. I love being king. Cara, kings do more than just boss everyone around all day. What? There's more to being king than just wearing fine clothes, riding around in chariots and waving to your adoring crowds. It's about wanting the best for your people, making sure you have good homes and plenty to eat. I'm still tired. I'm going to go back. Thank you, Cara and Eva. Uh, Yes, 
dreaming about being king. Wouldn't it be marvelous of all these servants? I liked it, the wee picture of servant boys putting grapes in your mouth. That was a really nice wee touch. Um, uh, but to be king, king for a day is really quite uh, what we're thinking about today. If I were king, wouldn't it be great if everybody were running after you? Wouldn't it be great if everyone to do the housework and run the messages and, oh, who does that already? Uh, well, sorry, mums and dads. Um, but yes, as we grow up, it wouldn't be nice to have people running after us just like a, a king. But that's not the kind of king, of course, that Jesus uh, was coming to be. Uh, uh, although that day, with all the palm branches, can you see them waving? Have you got the palm branches? Yeah, every time we're going to sing, by the way, we're going to wave these. So keep them to, keep them to hand. Good job. Well, that's quite windy down there, isn't it? So that's good. Hang on to them. They really wanted to welcome him as a king. They recognized he was a king and they wanted him to be king. The king, uh, king David, his kingdom would be fantastic. But Jesus didn't have a Maserati or a Jaguar or a BMW. In fact, he didn't even have a donkey, did he? Do you remember? Where did he get the donkey from? You remember? Did you re- hear the story? Can you tell me where to get the donkey? Yes, yeah, he found it. And so it wasn't his donkey? No. You think he borrowed it? Yeah. Yeah, he borrowed his don- donkey. But riding on a donkey was a sign of, of a great king coming in. So he was wanting people to see that he was king. Uh, did you have lots of expensive clothes and big jewels and king <coughs> a helmet, a crown in his head, do you think? No? Jesus didn't actually, when he was putting a cross, they, they actually gambled for his cloak. Did he have a house? Did he have a nice big house to stay in? A palace? No, where was he born again? I'm trying to remember now. Where was he born again? Yeah. He was born in a stable. A stable, that's right. He had no big palace. He was an ordinary person. He had uh, just one or two bits of clothing. He didn't have a house. To, he stayed with friends. In fact, at the end of the reading today, it talked about staying with his friends in Bethany. But he was an amazing person. People didn't care. They wanted to say, this is our king. He's going to bring King David's kingdom to us today. And we're going to say he's the king of kings and lord of lords, but a different kind of king. And we'll be thinking about that in a minute. So let's sing, if I can get this correct. And we're going to sing king of kings, lord of lords. Now, I'm told that King of Kings and Lord of Lords, glory, hallelujah, and repeat that again, all right? So you can start with that, but you don't say a word. Keep your palm branches down. Whenever they go on to Jesus, Prince of Peace, that's your signal to start. So we're doing a syncopated thing, all right? So when the second time, um, when they go on to Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, hallelujah, you start singing, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Think we've got that? Do you want a wee practice? Just a wee practice. The, uh, yeah, yeah. So just gently, okay? King of Kings, Lord of Lords. sure, but. That's when you start. Okay, right, we've got it. Uh, we're very shy. Okay, right, let's go. Let's stand up. Now let's see these palm branches as we're singing. Okay. So we this side don't start. Okay, you start.
something worked. <laughs> if you weren't singing the right bit, it doesn't matter. It sounded good. It's brilliant. Just a real sense of... You can stay if you like. <laughs> Obviously, it was too much fun. Um, now, the youngsters are staying in to help us with this great sense of excitement today of the King of Kings. It's a real Hebrewic tone, wasn't it, of the, the, the way it would be sung originally. So thank you for that. A real sense of the expectancy of the King of Kings. But of course, it wasn't all about Palm Sunday because the shadow of the cross would be there for Jesus, which he knew for sure the choir. Jesus knew that he wasn't going to be an ordinary king. When he came to Jerusalem, he, he wanted people to understand that he would be a king, all right. And so he was in a donkey. He, he came in with all the crowds and all the palm trees and all the palms waving. And he took all that. He said, yes, I am a king. But he knew as a choir were singing that it would be a different kind of king. So for that day... People were saying, yeah, let's have a wonderful king like Jesus. Absolutely superb. But I saw something in one of the classes I was in. Now, perhaps, I'm hoping that one of you might, might be one of your classes here. When I was in school, there were two girls sitting on a desk. It, it ran about the sort of middle center of, of the class. And everybody else was around about in their normal desks. 
And they were sitting in that desk. And what do you think I was thinking? If they were separated from everybody else, I was thinking, have they been naughty? Does anyone know? Is that in anybody's class? Is it Scarlett? Grace? No? Well, they weren't being naughty. Uh, this was in a particular class now. I just have been in so many classes. It wasn't one of yours. The two girls, they were sitting in their seat and they had cushions and did soft toys and they had people doing things for them. Do you know this? Uh, maybe it's just one class. They were VIPs for the day. They were the very important people, and they were special. And I thought they'd been naughty and been up to mischief. Do anyone else remember these moments when you were told to sit at the back or the front or sit underneath the teacher so you didn't misbehave? Maybe it was just me. But um, <laughs> you were set. But no, they were special people. They were VIPs, very important people, just for the day. And people, they wouldn't have any other chores to do. Other people would do, do all the messages and they would get their packed lunch for them and all that sort of thing. They were VIPs for the day, special people. But it was just for the day. It'd be nice to have all the time, wouldn't it? People running after us all the time. We've already said there's one person or two people in the house that usually do that. But um, Jesus was king. But remember... What happened after Palm Sunday? Can you remember? You know, bold enough to tell me? What kind of things that made, made us realize that he was only king for a day? What did the people do? What happened after Palm Sunday? Yeah, Sasha. They put him on the cross. They put him on the cross, yeah. That's never a nice thing to do for a king, is it? If he was going to be king, we'd have all the power in the world. And Jesus said, don't stop them. I could, I could ask our Heavenly Father to stop them. But he was arrested. What happened to the disciples when he was arrested? Can anyone tell me? The older ones? Yeah. What happened to the disciples when he was arrested? Um, they were sad. They were sad, absolutely. They were very sad. Any reason why they were sad? What did they do? Did they stand by Jesus? Lewis, you tell us. You know what happened. Did they hide? They hid, yes. Some, some hid. Some uh, were very sad. Anyone else remember? We just read through this in Friday test here. <laughs> did he stand with them? Did he say, I'll never let you down? What did the disciples do? Yeah. So that they went into this place, they locked all of the doors, and then, and then God appeared. Yes, absolutely. Well, that was wonderful. They were all hidden, and they were hiding in the rooms. Well done. That's, uh, that's a wee bit after this as well, of course, when Jesus came to them. But they all ran away. They ran away. They were scared for them, themselves. They thought they were going to be arrested. And they really thought that that was the end of everything. But Jesus was king for the day. The disciples ran away and left him. His friends said, no, we never knew him. And Jesus was beaten and put on the cross. All to show us God's love. He did that, that we might live. Uh, mums and dads, uh, perhaps I'll mention more of this next week, but the French officer who, who substituted himself for the other, the other uh, hostage, that's a perfect example of what Jesus has done for us. He stood in our place that we might go free. A marvelous thing to do. And it's, it's caught the imagination. So Jesus, yes, king for a day, but he was going to be a different kind of king. He doesn't want just to be king of our hearts when we come to church or for a day. He wants to be king of all of our lives every day. He wants us, our loyalty. He wants us every day to be his followers. One day every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. One day everybody will know that. But today of all days, let's give our hearts to Jesus that we will not let him down and not run away. We'll be his followers. He wants us to know his love that way. Yes, from the youngest to the oldest, right on cue. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> it's a joy to have the even here. So we're going to sing again. Uh, for this 
king of kings. He's a king of our hearts. He's a king of our lives. So what we'll do this time, when it comes to the chorus, make way, make way, okay? I seem to, I seen myself in a video waving these things around. So at this, when it comes to the chorus, you'll sing make way and you will echo make way for the king of kings, for the king of kings. Is that all right? Is that, the, is that okay? Choir? That's good. Make way. We'll sing the verse. And, but it comes to chorus to split. Okay. Now, now we're going to have an offering first, girls. Okay, sorry. Yeah, very enthusiastic there. Do you see that? That's really nice. But let's, uh, I'm going to do pause for a minute because normally we take our offering now and as an act of worship. And there'll be a surprise for you just after that before you come to pray. So the offering.
girls will come forward in, in, in a minute, a minute or two, just to lead us in our prayer, which will be rather nice. It strikes me, though, that we need to remember that Jesus doesn't want us just to say that we love him or say that we'll follow him. He wants us to have his values, his spirit in our hearts. I was at a concert on Tuesday evening in the school, and there was one particular song that was sung, the school song, Courage, Compassion, Friendship and Fairness, isn't it? Respect, Responsibility. Yeah, they were very shy. And I'm thinking, I remember when we put these things together. Courage, what is it? Courage, compassion, fairness and friendship, respect, responsibility. Wonderful school values, a nice wee song. Grace, courage, compassion, friendship and fairness. Yeah, there we go. It's good to be doing it. I think that's the kind of people that the school wants to have. People with these sort of values inside their hearts. And Jesus wants us to be the kind of people that will show these things in how we treat other people. Courage, compassion, friendship, and fairness. What was the other one? Respect, responsibility. Of course it is. Um, but he also wants us to love in our hearts. Uh, I can see there's a hand on to you. Uh, hang on a wee second. He wants to be kind of people that can love and, and show forgiveness. Yep. Fairness, it's fairness, friendship. No, I can't. I can't really remember it now. Uh, it's okay, that's all right, that's okay. Courage, compassion, fairness, friendship, respect, responsibility. And then what's the line after that? Uh, you do it again. And you do it again. See, it's, it's fantastic. It's a great thing to be able to sing these things. But Jesus wants us to be the kind of people that shows courage, compassion, friendship, and fairness. And he wants us to show his love. He wants us to know that if, if he's king of our hearts, then we can make a difference to this world. And the surprise is that today we have a lady called Jessica who is working in Uganda in Mango School and helping making a difference to young lives. Can we show that clip first of all? It's just a few seconds uh, if we can get it to work. Caroline, I had a wee bit of trouble. Just, uh, just since Jessica's here, it's a wonderful chance to see. Let us join our school of education and fighting Lord and from our nation. We honor you and give you respect Later, we are pushed into schools, always at an average of four years. We are forced to read and write. Imagine education, education, the key to progress. And for this activity requires education to raise public offices for us. Thank you so much. God bless you all. How about that for a school, eh? <laughs> You've been helping uh, uh, these youngsters. And I wonder if, Jessica, could I give you a wee minute or two just to say you would like to come forward? It's great to have you here. Uh, please come forward. And I want Michaela to come with you to keep you company, in case she's shy. But to realize that we, think, we do things that make a difference across the world. And Jesus wants us to make a difference to people's lives. Jessica, it's great to have you with us. <laughs> it's really quite a surprise. But you wanted to say a wee word. Now, you're a head teacher or teacher in Mango School? I'm a director and I'm Di the founder of Mango School. Or a director and founder of Mango School. So they, they don't just eat mangoes all the time. No. <laughs> My grandson loves them. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, yes. and, and you're here just to, to see how things are. And yes, and to, um, I'm, I've come to this, uh, this place and to say a big, big thank you for all of your support. Um, you've done so well, mainly Star Child. Since you donated money to the Mangote School, we have so much difference and the, the place have developed a lot. You've changed so many lives. It's not only within the children, but the society also, the community. Your support have given so much. You know, like uh, you've saved these children going to 
be married off and child labor. So whatever what you're doing, keep on doing. And like uh, Tom said, that friendship, compassion, res responsibilities. Respect, yeah. Respect, we all have that in, and we have the responsibilities to make sure that these children have education, that they are loved, and they know that you guys, you love them. For what you're doing, you haven't seen them, but when you go to the ground and see the real reality, you see, you see their smile. It's amazing. Thank you. Without you support, we couldn't do it. So whatever you're doing, keep on doing. And the friendship, we need you to be our friends. <laughs> Everybody needs a friend. And keep on doing what you're doing. And thank you for supporting Star Child. They're doing a tremendous job. And they have just give us a, like what we call a hug. And that hug that you're giving us, keep on giving us that hug. We need you guys. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. <laughs> thank Jessica, you. thank you very much. <laughs> Jessica will be around. Uh, just, uh, it's good to have you here after it was as well. Just a wee surprise. I just wanted you to realize it's not just about what we say and do here. Even just when we raise funds to for a stir up lunch and all the things you were doing too, it does make a difference. And that's what Jesus wants. He wants us to make a difference to people's lives. It's not just about what happens here on a Sunday or, or, or any other time. He wants us to be he wants us to be loyal to him. He wants to be king of our hearts all the time so that, not just that we might feel better, so that this world will be a better place. These youngsters will have an education and it's just a, an example of what you're doing, all of us, when we follow Jesus. So I think with that little reminder of how practical God wants us to be, our prayer of intercession, you two. Have you woken up yet, Cara? Yeah? That was a good, yeah, this is real now, okay, you're not dreaming this one. Nice and slow, let's, let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you entered Jerusalem in quiet humility, taking the form of a servant, even to the point of death on, on a cross, emptying yourself so that we might be filled. Come again now and, and establish, establish your kingdom. kingdom. Come afresh to our troubled world with all its needs, its tensions, its problems and its evil. Come again now and, and establish, establish your kingdom. kingdom. Bring healing where there is division, love where there is hatred, hope where there is despair, joy where there is sorrow, confidence where there is fear, strength where there is weakness, healing where there is sickness, life where there is death. Come again now and establish, establish your kingdom. kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, reach out to your church and world. Despite the weakness of our faith and rejection of so many, May your will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. Come again now and, and establish, establish your kingdom, kingdom for in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for leading our prayer and being so much part of our service today. We're going to sing again. Ride on, ride on in majesty.
as we go on through Holy Week, remind us, Almighty and Eternal God, in these most solemn days of what you've achieved for us in all of this week of betrayal, of abandonment, of torture, and the end. But we look towards Easter and the resurrection when we will celebrate once more the great presence of God. And so we go today looking forward to all the events of this week, reminded that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, your whole character, your presence, your power is with us and those whom we love this day and forevermore.